So, customer data platforms. Um, I guess the evolution, in my view, has come from traditionally email service platforms, which have then housed all of your customer data. You've then used that to send out customer messaging. The whole idea of a, of a customer data platform is essentially where a platform collects lots of information about your customer. You then have a single point view on your customer, and then you can make decisions about how you want to market to them. That's my view on kind of what they are and how they work. Any, any opinion on the evolution of them and how they've come about? Uh, yeah, I'd like to think of it as being, uh, I guess the starting point being CRM platforms, which yeah. were really focused on bringing in that first party data, um, mainly transactional data, mm. um, and, and uh, later customer contact center information, just to really try and build that picture of what our customers are doing, what they're buying, and how they're interacting with us as a brand. Mm. Um, but yeah, absolutely, as we've moved beyond that uh, and start to bring in third party data, um, uh, from uh, digital marketing platforms or from um, our analytics platforms mm. uh, and, and layering that onto to the first party data. Yeah. That's really, I think, what brings us to, to, to the sort of um, the data platforms that we're, mm. we're looking at and we're using today. Cool. And how do you see offline playing a part in that? Do you think that there needs to be a much, a much more evolution in that kind of piece or do you feel like it's never going, we're never going to get there? Well, I, we'll probably never get to, to, to a point of, uh, of perfection when mm -hmm. it comes to offline data. Um, but I think as retailers get better at identifying uh, who their in-store shoppers are yeah. in, in the same way that they're able to do um, online, mm -hmm then I think that uh, that level of data will play an increasingly important part in understanding what it is that customers are doing, yeah. how they're interacting with us as brands, and and uh, and what we can do to, to improve mm. the, the experiences and personalise the experiences that we put in front of those customers. Makes sense. Do you feel like, I guess there's two parts of how you use a platform like this at the moment. First of which is marketing to them and giving them then personalised experiences. But it's also learning from what you're seeing and what they're actually doing. So that might influence stock, that might influence buying behavior, that might influence uh, the business in a wider capacity. Do you want to do anything like that at the moment or is it heavily on the kind of marketing side still? It is predominantly on the marketing side. You know, yeah. how do we make sure that we we are being as efficient as possible in the marketing messages that we put in front of, of our customers? Yeah, because they cost money, but also because they cost the attention of our customers. We sure. want to make sure that we get that absolutely uh, right. Yeah, um, I think I think probably the the big area for us is is moving beyond that uh, that that thinking about uh, how we bring in the data from a from a data platform mm. uh, to influence the marketing messages uh, and, and really trying to use that sort of data to influence how we personalize web experiences yeah. digital experiences for, for our customers with everything that we know about them, what they what they have bought from us previously, yep. what they've done and looked at on site, um, how they've interacted with us through customer contact centres, how they've reviewed previous products and service with indeed, us, indeed, indeed, yeah, and really trying to tailor our digital experiences to reflect all of that information and, yep. and make sure that we really get that that you know experience spot on. Cool. Is there any tech you think that's really hitting the nail at the moment, or do you think that it's quite an exciting? thing to look at I think it's a really exciting space yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, and I think you know thinking about the evolution of of, uh, of, of these kind of platforms mm. from you know early CRMs which were effectively standalone yeah. and now we've seen that it's the it's the the, the marketing automation platforms yeah. that uh, that have either built this capability or have acquired it or the other way around yeah. you know I think it's I think it's very clear that that these sorts of platforms are for marketers yeah uh, and, and for people who are, are focused on delivering great customer experiences, mm. um, and they've got to be usable by those people. They're not, sure. they're not kind of sure. you know pieces of tech for, for, for pieces of tech's sake. They no. are there no. to enable marketers and uh, and experience managers to, to, to really try and improve what they're doing and, and, and yeah. deliver those those great experiences. So I guess you've got to be a, a really at a certain size to be able to really not only probably afford this type of tech, but secondly make use of it. From a marketing perspective, you've got to be of a certain scale, I'd have thought. Yes, 
uh, <laughs> although you know, yeah. as with everything, yeah. uh, what what starts off being you know enterprise only, mm-hmm. very very quickly becomes. Uh, accessible sure. tech. Um, you know, it's, m- most of these platforms are now, you know, cloud hosted. Yep. There is, uh, uh, there, there is not a sort of uh, setup cost barrier in, in no. maybe the way that that, that there previously was. So yeah. I think we will find this becoming much more accessible Makes to sense. to small and medium sized uh, enterprises as well as as well as the corporates. Cool. Thank you very much.